Hi, Bruno Jr. here. Our podcast, Busting Addiction and Smiths, is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com. SafeHouse believes that traditional treatments fall short of the needs of clients who face the modern problems of addiction. Modern problems need modern solutions. Multiple addictions, multiple relapses, multiple triggers, and cheaper and more powerful street drugs set up unprecedented challenges facing treatment centers. What is needed is a more sophisticated approach, a better way forward. There are three reasons to choose our progressive modern treatment program. One, a more sophisticated intake process. Two, technology proven to enhance recovery. And three, the most robust aftercare program in our sector. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com. This is uh, Season 13, Episode 3, entitled, I Lived a Horrible Life, by Bruno J. We're talking about my life for a while. Before I sobered up and stopped drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana, popping pain pills, lying, cheating on my wife, stealing by overinflating my expense account, and, quote, borrowing money I would never repay and never intended to repay, I lived what could only be described as a horrible life. After I sobered up and stopped doing all those things, I asked my counselor, Margaret, which is her real name, Margaret, why am I so depressed all the time? This was about the three-month stage of sobriety, which started about 29 years ago. She said, Bruno, the reason you are so depressed so much of the time is that you have been drinking a depressant called alcohol for 25 straight years. And you sit there and wonder why you are so depressed all the time, as you put it. Another time I asked the same and wise counselor if I I revere her to to this very day. The following question, Margaret, what's wrong with me? I'm whining to her at this point. She put me straight on that one too. She was an iron hand in a velvet glove. Young man, she said, and I was 46 at the time. Why don't you sober up first and then we'll figure out what's wrong with you? Hmm. It took about six months for the treatment team to watch me get clean and sober and then begin to rule out the many possible things that might have been wrong with me, like bipolar disorder, depression, anxiety disorder, and OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder. There there was more, but I, I can't recall them. We figured out what was wrong with me. I was an alcoholic addict through and through, and I was overjoyed to learn that that was the only thing that was wrong with me. Imagine learning that you are an alcoholic and an addict and being happy about that. I bring this back up to the title of my story, a true story, and there are things that I vaguely know happened but either cannot easily recall or have repressed because they caused me such guilt and anguish and shame. But the wonder of the 12 steps, by the way, is that they literally force you to write that stuff down so that you can unload it and make amends, which frees you from the shame and guilt that might otherwise cause you to take solace in alcohol and or drugs to forget it all. But only for a little while, because the next day it'll all come back. And you'll be just as miserable, perhaps even more so, because you might have done some newly shameful things while you were, quote, out there. I became a violent person when provoked by my girlfriend with whom I was living in a shithole studio in Manhattan in the 80s. I had a great job, a career-type job, with a corner office on the 26th floor of 1515 Broadway, I kid you not, which had a theater on the first floor. As an aside, New York was smart like this. If you wanted to buy an old Broadway theater and put up a gazillion-dollar high-rise, you know, uh, raise the old theater, blow it up, whatever, and build a new high-rise. You had to build a new Broadway theater into the first floor of your new building. And some of these new theaters were really rather nice, so it revived the theater district. A violent person. I never, ever thought I would become a violent person. I beat the crap out of my girlfriend in a drunken rage. Forget the provocation because the cops don't care, nor should they. They cuffed me and brought me to an east side precinct station, which was the quietest police station one could ever see. That's because it was in a wealthy neighborhood on the east side. My crappy studio was in a wealthy neighborhood. On the way to the station, one of the cops says, Hey man, you've got to get away from that bitch. She's crazy. 
But we don't lock up the ladies. We lock up the men in a domestic 99% of the time. You didn't use a weapon and she's not hurt, so we'll charge you with simple assault. And it can probably be resolved without going to court and expunging your record. I was so happy to hear that kind of news, I almost peed right there in the back seat with my cuffs on. My horrible life was really a double life. During the day, I was an up-and-comer at about 34 years of age with a staff of seven reporting to me and later decided to hate me. I was the man management director of three big brands in the pet food business whose headquarters were in California while our agency office was in New York City. We would travel to California about once every six weeks or so, rent the most expensive foreign cars like Alfa Romeo convertibles and so on, dine at some ridiculous L.A. or Hollywood restaurants, eat sushi and sashimi for lunch, attend all-day meetings. The most of the time, the clients went home to their families, and we account guys, usually three of us or more, would get drunk and high at the Westwood Marquis Hotel in Westwood near UCLA. At the end of my working day in Times Square, I would wander across to the east side where I shared my studio with my crazy girlfriend with whom I was truly in love, except that she would stay clean of cocaine for six months or so, then go on a bender and become absent, run away, go crazy, get mean, and suicidal. I had to keep her from jumping out the window of the sixth floor. We would eat out every night and often get, a, get, and get drunk and fight right there on the street, and those were my nights. And my days were 100% different until my attitude as an arrogant drunk. Never, ever drunk at work. I was too slick for that. My arrogance cut up with me. My staff came to hate me, and I got my ass fired, and I fell 26 floors to the street and figuratively splat. That was in the mid-1980s. It took another eight years of going down and down until I got sick and tired of going down and down. I've told you what it was like, some of it, and what happened. I surrendered my old way of life for a new one and got intensive treatment with Margaret as my, as my teacher. In the next episode, I'll share more of my life from my New York wanderings to my experiences in Milwaukee and what life is like today. Transformations and miracles are real, at least for me. Maybe my story can inspire another suffering person, addict, alcoholic, or a loved one cares for someone with a substance use disorder to get help. It's there waiting for you at aa.org or alanon.org or na.org or even ca.org, Cocaine Anonymous. So what have we learned today? Well, we learned that one, for many of us, we try to keep up appearances despite the emptiness and despair inside of us. I know that well. I lived that life. Two, that leads us to lead a double life until that act blows up when addiction or alcoholism takes over and we lose our material position. Three, we addicts are completely unaware that addiction has taken over our lives and changed us in ways we would not recognize. An example is how I became a violent person. In fact, violating every good value I once held dear. I never thought of myself as a violent person, but I became one. Four, it took another eight years of horrible, insane life going ever further down. And this was despite short-term success along the way and lots of money to burn before I wake, woke up to what was really going on. Five, it may seem strange to you, but I was relieved to learn that instead of being clinically insane, all I had was an advanced case of addiction and alcoholism, which explained almost all the crazy symptoms. There was hope at last. Our podcast is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com, a modern approach to recovery. To learn more, visit us at SafeHouseRehab.com.